That was easy. <laughs> that would be good. I remember when I was in seventh grade. I I I I distinctly remember parts of this and not so much other parts of it. I, I so a group of my friends. I we went back to our elementary school. And uh, I think we even spent some time uh, in the class. We, we ran into um, our old teacher that we had for fifth and sixth grade. And we uh, talked with her a little bit. And then we just started after that just talking about, because now we were like big time junior hires, right? We're no longer in elementary school. So sort of talking about that and, and, you know, just all the great times we'd had at Killian Elementary School. But I distinctly remember in this young little mind of mine, I remember thinking, like even just as we interacted with our teacher, like, you know what, she kind of seemed kind of cool. Like, I, I, like I, I don't remember really appreciating her at all while I was in her class. Like, I, you know, it's like when I was in her class, I just didn't really like her that much. But afterwards, I, I found myself looking back thinking, thinking, you know what, I really, like, got a lot out of her class. And, you know, we had a lot of really great times in her class. And I just began to really appreciate my experience in her class and that she actually seemed like she was a really nice person. I never really grabbed onto that at all the two years that I had her for a teacher. I think for a lot of us, the times we're most thankful is when like a chapter in our life is coming to a close And a new chapter is starting. Isn't that the time that we usually spend being thankful? I I think that that's what we do. We we, kind of wait till we're looking back. Until we're thankful. I was watching a little bit of the uh, NFL um, uh, Hall of Fame, you know, ceremony last night. Anybody watch that? Um, Yeah, there were some good speeches there. I was watching just a little bit of it. And and when Jason Taylor was speaking, he said something, um, and he was a lineman from the the, uh, Miami Dolphins, and he he shared something to this effect. He said, um, well, he got done just kind of being grateful and thankful for the experiences and the people that were in his life that helped make up his career. And he said this, he said, I just have one regret He said, I have one regret, and that is I didn't appreciate enough my Hall of Fame career while it was going on. While it was going on, while it was happening. But isn't that what we tend to do? We say most of our thankfulness for when we're looking back. When we're looking back. When the chapters of our lives close and we're looking back at it. You know, Kathy and I are kind of in the process of doing that right now as, you know... (laughs) Um, you know, our, our, our one chapter in our lives, our chapter here is coming to a close. And, and, and so we're doing that and we're, we're looking back and we're, um, we're recounting all the things that we have to be thankful for. And I got to tell you, there are, there are so many. There are so many. I mean, the friendships um, that we have here, we are so thankful for. The many people who serve the Lord in this church faithfully here. I'll tell you, they're some of the most incredible um, Christ-like servants in this church that I've ever seen. The faith, the dedication, and the godliness of the elders and the, and the board members of our church is, is phenomenal. It really is incredible. God's provision for this church. I mean, even just this building, okay? I, I'm really thankful um, that we have, with all of its shortcomings, I'm thankful that we, we, we have this place, that we get to come and worship together. Because after all, we don't have to set up and tear down every week like we did at the theater, but even the theater I'm thankful for. I'm even thankful for the time we had in the theater because I'll tell you something, there was a lot of churches that wanted to utilize that theater um, but didn't get get to. But because I knew the owner's best friend, we got to use the theater. And that was a great place for us to start. We as a church made it through that that recession that that happened, you know, during a a few years back. Um, We made it through that recession with zero debt. That's awesome. God's provision for this church is is amazing. In fact, we have no debt to this day. This church is pretty financially stable. And keep giving, please keep giving and (laughs) continue to be financially stable because that's important for a church to be able to continue to do the things God calls it to do. I'm thankful for the 226 people that we've baptized 
I mean, I began to think about that. That is awesome. I mean, um, you know, and, and, and uh, um, to think of that not even just as a number, but I began to think of a lot of the individuals who, and, and some of you guys are here, are part of that 226. But think about 226 people that are now a part uh, of the family of God that are going to heaven with us now. That is awesome. And I'm excited when I think back of just the individual people that, those, that makes up that number of 226. I, I, am, I am really thankful for the ministry of our preschool, as I just, we just talked about. And, um, you know, we just felt from early on that that, that was uh, a ministry that God wanted us to be a part of. And, and like I said, I think that we now have one of the finest in the area. I am thankful for the compassion and the generosity uh, of this church. You know that, that yesterday um, we gave away 150 backpacks full of school supplies. Um, now, that, that, uh, that, that, that helped out 150 families that, whose kids are going to school, and now they've got supplies for school. And you know what? That, that, was our, that was our biggest giveaway ever. In fact, we still had a few people that needed supplies, and we ran out. We ran out. And, and by the way, I want to just take a, just a quick second and just thank all of you guys that helped make that possible, not only but with the fact that you gave. I mean, those backpacks were just full of some awesome supplies. But th- some of you came and helped set that up and, and stuffed the backpacks and were here yesterday giving them out. And, man, we are so thankful for your service to that end. Um, Alejandro, and I know, helped get the word out amongst the, the Spanish ministry and, and, and the, the people in, in, uh, in that uh, Bible study, and, and they, they really helped get the word out for us, and we're appreciative of that as well. I'm thankful for the great worship that we've experienced through the years. The great worship we get to experience here on Sunday mornings with the gifted musicians and the, and the worship teams and the leaders that have led us in worship. I'm super thankful for that. I'm thankful for the fun that we have at family camps and youth camps and men's and women's retreats and conferences. I'm thankful for the impact that we make in the community with our, our homeless feeding ministry and our various food distribution programs and our, our family carnival and our Easter in the park and our venture out service days. And I'm thankful for the people that we've gotten to stand by, support, cry with, laugh with, pray with. There's so much to be thankful for. But it's just so natural for us to to do most of our thankfulness when we're looking back. When we're looking back. But I don't think God wants us to wait until we're looking back to be thankful. We are told seven times in the small book of Colossians to be thankful. Three times in the three verses we're going to read today. Three verses that we're going to read today. It's obviously important, and it's obvious that it's something that we should make note of today. So grab your Bibles and uh, turn to Colossians. Turn to Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. And look at verse 15. It says, and let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God the Father through him. So he says, let the peace of Christ rule and, and be thankful. Remember, the peace of, for the Christian is to feel completely secure and safe, not only in your standing before God, but also in, in the things that you know he's going to do in your life, to be completely safe and secure in that. So he says, let the peace of Christ rule and be thankful. In verse 16, he says, let the word of Christ dwell in you and be thankful. To dwell, to live there. He wants the word to, to live there. Then in verse 17, he says, whatever you do, do it to honor Jesus and be thankful. Do it to honor Jesus and be thankful. Why are we told so many times to be thankful? I think because too often we put that off. Too often we're we're neglectful and we forget to be thankful in the midst of life. We forget to be thankful in the midst of life. I think that especially happens in the midst of our struggles. Isn't it hard for us to be thankful in the midst of our struggles? Man, we, we, just, we don't even want to be thankful, let alone remember to do it. 
But uh, there's a story about Corey Tenboom. Car- Corey Tenboom, um, when she was young, um, she uh, got got uh, her and her family um, got taken by by the Germans, by the Nazis, and put into a concentration camp. And, and she spent she spent years in a, in a concentration camp. And and she was uh, at one time she was in this barracks, um, a woman's barracks in this concentration camp. And this barracks that she was in be- just became just terribly, terribly infested with fleas to the point that it was just driving them crazy. And most of the women were just, were just complaining and, and griping and just, it was, it was driving them insane. And Corey Tembroom got the ladies in that barracks together and said, we just need to be thankful to the Lord right now. Let's, we just need to thank God. And they, let's just find some things to be thankful for. She even said, let's just, let's thank God for these fleas. What do you think? And you know what? They did. They did. They began to thank God. They began to find out what they could thank God for. They even thanked God for those fleas. And it changed their attitude. But you know what? <laughs> what they found out later? They found out later uh, because in that, in that concentration camp, the soldiers would often go into the women's barracks and they would rape the women that were there. But the soldiers didn't want to go into that barracks because it was so infested with fleas that they left those women completely alone. They found out that these fleas that they decided to just thank God for was something that they were incredibly thankful to God for. we got to remember to be thankful in the midst of life, in the midst of even the hard times, in the, 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 the situations where we don't know how it's going to turn out. We're commanded in Scripture to be thankful But you know what, we also, I think sometimes we overlook being thankful, even in the midst of our blessings, even in the midst of the good things. It reminds me of a story in Luke chapter 17, when Jesus healed these ten lepers. Now, leprosy was a terrible, terrible disease. It affected the nerves, and you got terrible sores. It was highly contagious, and it was so bad that lepers weren't allowed to even really interact with the the common, the, the, the regular people. They had, to, they, had to be, they had to live in, in colonies, in leper colonies, and if they ever did come into town, they, had, they would have to yell out to other people, unclean, unclean, so people knew a leper is coming, so they could keep their distance from them. It was so highly contagious, they would have to cover themselves, and so they never got to, to touch anybody. Then there, was never, there was no intimacy in their life. They're, they just They were completely shut out from society. Didn't get to be involved with their families. Their children, they were outcasts. So Jesus comes upon this group of ten lepers, and and they cry out to him, have mercy on us, have mercy on us. And and so you know what Jesus does? He says, okay, I'm going to heal you. In fact, he says, go show yourself to the priest, because that's what they would have to do if they were healed. The priest would have to say, okay, you guys are clean, and now you can go uh, back to, to a normal life. And so he said, go show yourself. He didn't heal them right away, but he said, go show yourself to the priest. And they're like, but we're still diseased. And, and, but okay, let's do it. Jesus said do it, let's do it. So they started going, and as they went to see the priest, guess what happened? They were healed. This was an incredible day. This was probably the, the most life-changing event, probably the greatest day of their lives, one they never expected would ever, ever happen to them. A day that their lives could return to normal. They were no longer had to yell out unclean. They they, they wouldn't have to only uh, hang out with other lepers. They could return home to their families. They, They could return home to their kids. They could interact with people. They could go to the temple. They could get a job. Well, one of them, when he realized he was clean, he said, holy cow, I need to go back. I gotta go back and thank Jesus. So he stopped. He didn't even go see the priest yet to be declared clean. He said, I got to go back and I got to thank Jesus. He put off being declared clean. He put off rejoining society. He put off going home to see his family and hugging his kids. He put off returning to a normal life. Why? So he could be thankful. Because he was thankful. He didn't want to wait to look back. I bet you those other nine... They went, to, they went to the priest, they got declared clean, they went home, they told everybody, all their friends, they hugged their family. And I'm sure later that night or the coming days, they probably looked back and thought, wow, I'm really thankful that that happened. But you know what? They missed out on the biggest blessing. 
Because that one guy who said, I'm not waiting to look back on this to be thankful. I want to go be thankful right now. He got to go and he got to dwell in the presence of Jesus in a very intimate way. To where Jesus said, I thought there were ten of you. Where's the other nine? But only that one got to really bask in the presence of Jesus because he chose to be thankful in the midst of his blessing, not till he was waiting to look back. It is so important for us to be thankful. We need to be thankful people. It is good for us to be thankful people. Did you know that? It's actually good for us to be thankful people. You know, God, he establishes a lot of truths and, and principles in the world. And then, and then, you know, there's people today, they put so much into science. They put so much like, well, I don't believe in God, I believe in science. But here's what's funny about science. Science is only discovering truths and principles that God already put into place a long time ago. Like God sets up the truth and then us as men, we, we use science to discover what God already put into place. And so, so uh, this, this whole idea of being thankful is a good example of that. In 2015 in Psychology Today magazine, an article was written entitled Seven Scientifically Proven Benefits of Gratitude. Seven Scientifically Proven Benefits of Gratitude. So God already has told us all over scripture and he's telling us, hey, you need to be thankful people. It's good for us to be thankful people. And, and, and our science of psychology is discovering that that is actually very true. Here, here are the seven scientifically proven benefits of gratitude. Number one, gratitude opens the door to more relationships. Not only does saying thank you constitute good manners, but showing appreciation can help you win new friends. According to a 2014 study published in Emotion, the study found that thanking a new acquaintance makes them more likely to seek an ongoing relationship. So whether you thank a stranger for holding the door or you send a thank you note to that colleague who helped you with the project, acknowledging other people's contributions could lead to new opportunities. Second thing, gratitude improves your physical health. Grateful people experience fewer aches and pains, they write. And a report feeling healthier uh, and report feeling healthier than other people, according to a 2012 study published in Personality and Individual Differences. Not surprisingly, grateful people are also more likely to take care of their health. They exercise more often and are more likely to attend regular checkups, which likely contributes to their further longevity. So gratitude improves your physical health. Number three, they write, gratitude improves your psychological health. They say gratitude reduces a multitude of toxic emotions from envy and resentment to frustration and regret. Robert Emons, a leading gratitude researcher, has conducted multiple studies on the link between gratitude and well-being. His research confirms that gratitude effectively increases happiness and reduces depression. Number four, gratitude enhances empathy and reduces reduces, <laughs> enhances empathy and reduces aggression. Grateful people are more likely to behave in a pro-social manner even when others behave less kindly. Number five, grateful people sleep better. Isn't that interesting? Writing in a gratitude journal improves sleep, according to a 2011 study published in Applied Psychology. Spend just 15 minutes jotting down a few grateful sentiments before bed, and you may sleep better and longer. Number six, gratitude improves self-esteem. A 2014 study published in the Journal of Applied Sports Psychology found that gratitude increases athletes' self-esteem, an essential component to optimal performance. Other studies have shown that gratitude reduce, reduces social comparisons rather than becoming resentful towards people who have more money or better jobs, a major factor in reducing self-esteem. Grateful people are able to appreciate others' accomplishments. And then finally, gratitude increases mental strength. For years, research has shown gratitude not only reduces stress, but also plays a major role in overcoming trauma. A 2006 study published in Behavior Research and Therapy found that Vietnam War veterans with higher levels of gratitude experience lower rates of post-traumatic stress disorder. A 2003 study published in the Journal of Personality and Social Psychology found that gratitude was a major contributor to resilience following the terrorist attacks of sep September 11th. 
recognizing all you have to do to be thankful for, even during the worst of times, fosters resilience. Isn't that interesting? We need to be thankful people. And you know what? We all have the ability and the opportunity to become grateful people, to be thankful. Rather than complain about the things that you think you deserve or the difficulty of your situation, take a few minutes. Take a few moments and focus on all that you have to be thankful for. It's probably more than you realize. It's probably a lot more than you realize. We just don't take time to focus on it. We don't take time to think about it. Being thankful is one of the simplest ways to improve your satisfaction in life. Look at this graphic. This graphic, uh, it says, No amount of regret changes the past. No amount of anxiety changes the future. Any amount of gratitude changes the present. I think that's good. I think that's good. Let's go back to our passage for just a second. Colossians chapter 3. He says there um, in verse 15, he says, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts and be thankful. So we have have this peace. We have this peace of Christ, and he says, I want that to rule in your heart. Then in verse 16, he says, he says, let the word of Christ, let the word of Christ rule dwell in you richly as you teach and you admonish one another with all wisdom. We have the wisdom of Christ. And then he says, and be thankful. And then he goes on and he says, and whatever you do in word or deed, so whatever you're out there doing, do it in a way, do it in the name of Jesus. Do it in a way that honors Jesus. Do it in a way that that would bring honor to your Savior. So he's kind of, what I think what he's talking about is he's talking about now you live life with a purpose. You have a purpose. You have Christ's purpose in your life. Oh, and be thankful. So he's saying you have the peace of Christ, you have the wisdom of Christ, and you have the purpose of Christ. That's a good place to start, to be thankful, don't you think? Whether things in your life are just, man, they're just stressful right now, they're overwhelming right now. Maybe things aren't turning out the way you quite had hoped. I want to challenge you today to still be a thankful person. In the midst of your hardship, in the midst of the confusion, in the midst of the stress, take time to be thankful. Man, if things are going awesome, they're falling into place for you, you can't even believe how lucky of a person you are because, man, the Lord is just smiling on you. Man, make sure you are thankful. Make sure you're thankful, realizing, you know what? You didn't get there yourself. That didn't all depend on just you. There's a great story about Alex Haley. He, uh, he has a picture in his office. Alex Haley wrote um, Roots. He's a famous author. And, and uh, he, he has a picture in his office of a, of a tortoise on top of a post. <laughs> it's, and it's just sitting there on top of this, on top of this post. And, and he was asked about it, like, why do you have that there? And he said, because it reminds me that no one gets to where they are without a little help. So yeah, things might be going awesome in your life, but man, you better take time to thank the Lord. Because you may be super gifted, you may be really talented, you may be just, you know, just, just really great at what you do, but you know what? You've gotten to where you are because the Lord has been chosen to bless you in that way. We have Christ's peace. We have Christ's wisdom. We have Christ's purpose. This whole thing that we're talking about is walk the walk. What does it mean to walk in Christ? Here's the thing. I don't think you can really, you, you, you can't walk in Christ and not be thankful. You can't walk in Christ and not be thankful. Because if you're walking in Christ and you're experiencing his peace and his wisdom and his purpose and all those things that we've been talking about leading up to today, and you know what? I don't think we can help but be thankful. I want us to just close today with just taking time to put it into practice. Pull out your sermon notes and, uh, you know, grab a pen. I'd like to ask you to just write down a couple things right now that you have to be thankful for. Just write down a couple things. 
might take you a minute for some of you because right now you're focused on nothing but your struggles. You're focused on nothing but your problems. But set that aside for a minute and just think about what it is that you have to be thankful for. What could you thank God for this morning? Take a minute and do that. If you don't, if you don't have sermon notes and a pen, then you just, you just make a, a real strong mental note right now. Just, in fact, just begin to thank Him. You don't need to just even make a mental note. Take time right now and just, just thank Him. If you're having trouble, let me read this to you real quick. It says, I'm thankful for the taxes I pay because it means I have a job. I'm thankful for the clothes that fit a little too snug because it means I have enough to eat. I'm fa- thankful for the lawn that needs mowing and the windows that need cleaning and the gutters that need fixing because it means I have a home. I'm thankful for the spot at the far end of the parking lot because it means I'm capable of walking. I'm thankful for my huge heating bill because it means I'm warm. Or, in our case, air conditioning bill. (laughs) I don't know who wrote this. They don't live in the Inland Empire. I'm thankful for all the complaining I hear about our government because it means we have freedom of speech. I'm thankful for the lady behind me at church who sings off key because it means I can hear. I'm thankful for the piles of laundry and ironing because it means my loved ones are nearby. I'm thankful for the alarm that goes off in the early morning hours because it means I'm alive. And I'm thankful for the weariness and the aching muscles at the end of the day because it means I've been productive. Sometimes we got some things to be thankful for we didn't even really consider being thankful for. We need to be thankful people. And you know what? Okay, right now, you know, this church is going to be going through some, some transition, some change. But there is so much to be thankful for. There is so much to be thankful for. So let's not focus on the changes that lie ahead or if this person or that person is doing this or that. It's all about the Lord. This church is dependent on Jesus Christ. And guess what? He's not going anywhere. Let's focus on what we got to be thankful for. Amen? Let's be thankful people. It really does make all the difference. Let's pray. Father God, we are just, we are so thankful. And we have so much to be thankful for. And God, I pray that we would be people who take time to do that. Not only because it honors you, which is a really good reason. But God, because you've made it so, being thankful is good for us. It benefits our lives to be thankful. Physically, emotionally, mentally, socially, psychologically. You've made it beneficial for us to be thankful people. And I pray, God, we would be thankful people. Help us, God, to take time out each day to just thank you and to thank others around us. God, this morning we're thankful that we have the opportunity to gather together to worship you. God, that we get to gather together and worship you without the threat of being arrested or being imprisoned or being killed. We're thankful for that. We're thankful for the many soldiers who defend our right to come together and worship you. And though our military personnel and the sacrifices they make to defend our freedom. But we're thankful for your love for us. 
We're thankful for your faithfulness to us. We're thankful for your grace. We're thankful you sent Jesus to die on the cross, which we got to celebrate and remember this morning in communion. We're thankful, God, that we have the means to be able to give to others and to give to your work here through this church. Lord, we're thankful for our health. Even those who are struggling with their health, God, they they were able to be here this morning. That means they're healthier than, than some other people. So we're thankful for those issues of our health that we take for granted. Lord, we want to walk out of these doors today as thankful people. And I pray, God, that can spill over into our lives this week. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.